Am I audible, guys? Everyone? Are you able to hear me? Are you guys able to hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. So, yes. So, assignment, how to submit? You should uh, send me the WhatsApp message of everything, whatever you have done. That's how you submit the assignment. It is way lot, it is lot more easier that way rather than I asking you to upload on some website. You can directly send it over to me. Okay, that's how. Okay, so um, what's going on in school? Which chapter? So we finished current electricity and we're doing semiconductors. Semiconductors you're doing. Okay. Yeah. Modern physics hasn't yet started, right? Atoms, nuclei, and all these chapters. No, sir. Okay, so see the idea is uh, to complete this chapter today. Okay, very little of this chapter is remaining, but whatever time we'll have after completing this, probably we'll have around two and a half to three hours. We'll be doing problems on this chapter. Okay, why we are doing so many problems on? Uh, the modern physics chapter is because I will not be revising these chapters later on. Got it? So that is the reason why we are doing a lot of problems on these small, small chapters only so that we are done with it in one go itself. No point revisiting it again. We will focus while revising, we will focus on the difficult chapters. Okay. So we'll complete this. Uh, comprehensively at all, all levels of problems will be done uh, while doing the chapter itself. That's how. So make sure you're doing the assignments also properly and submitting it. You have to practice a lot of questions because uh, treat as if you are not going to revise this chapter ever. So finish this off uh, once for all. Okay, so that you save a lot of time later on. If you assume that later on, if you assume that later on you have to uh, revise this chapter, then that revision won't happen and you will not be able to do the chapter also properly in the first uh, instance itself. Okay. All right. So, um, any doubts till now with respect to this chapter? Anyone has? Have you done the assignment? That is the actual ask, actually ask that question. Then only doubts will come, right? Those who doesn't ask doubt doesn't do anything. That's why doubts are not there. But anyways, so last class what we did was we introduced what is the nucleus. Okay, we introduced mass energy equivalence, which is the basis of everything in this chapter. What does mass energy equivalence say? Pratham, what it is? Mass energy equivalence. Or mass can be converted to energy. That's all. Can energy be converted to mass? Yes, sir. I think so. Yes. Even energy can be converted into mass. Okay. So, you, you know what is the implication of that? It has a very wide implication that if there is an object which has a velocity okay what we say that kinetic energy we say kinetic energy of an object moving with velocity v is half m v square 
all right but in reality kinetic energy formula is a hypothetical formula okay this is something which we have assumed to be this in reality what happens is that if uh, the speed of an object increases its mass increases so mass becomes m not divided by 1 minus v by c whole square where v is the velocity okay so if certain object is moving with velocity v its mass increases so at rest at rest the mass is m not this is called rest mass okay i am talking about mass energy equivalence little bit here before starting the today's topic so all of you focus here till now we just like we have learned about the bonds formation of bond double bond triple bond exothermic reaction is a formation of new bonds potential energy and all that and later on we identified that it is nothing but conversion of mass into energy which leads to exothermic reaction similarly even kinetic energy is a higher order concept higher order as in it is not a basic concept at the core level at the base level what is happening is that whenever an object is uh, is uh, having some velocity its mass becomes equal to m not divided by this okay so its kinetic energy simply will become equal to mass uh, m minus m not into speed of light square okay so if an object increases its velocity its mass which was m not earlier increases to mass m and whatever is the extra mass into c square that will be its kinetic energy all right i understand that this is something completely new and weird to you Uh, till now everybody was talking about kinetic energy to be equal to half mv square and that's how we have proceeded but uh, you know i am trying to explain the same thing the energy concept with respect to mass energy equivalence okay so a clock which is running is heavier than a clock which is not running okay any moving part by mass energy equivalence what happens is that some energy gets converted into mass all right so this is what happens at the very very basic level okay so that's how important the einstein relativity concept is okay so this is mass of an object whose rest mass is m not and who is moving with velocity v mass increases by this much and difference in the mass difference between the mass at rest and whatever is the current mass into c square will be its energy which got converted into mass while it is moving everybody understand this whatever i have just said is it clear aditya is it clear to you ayush yes sir yes sir okay so there are some numericals on this concept also this chapter makes you think in a different way same thing which you already know this chapter makes you think it makes you look at it in a different way okay so i hope this is not very confusing to you it is as simple as uh, you know some energy if there is more energy in an object it automatically means it has more mass because you are supplying energy that energy will get converted into mass okay and how much mass will become mass will become this much m not divided by root over 1 minus v by c whole square this is given by the einstein understood dhyan any doubt sir ha huh. sir we can use that uh, formula the mass m in the kinetic energy equation sir what we can you like this Which mass m this one yes sir this doesn't work if your speed is close to a speed of light don't use that it's an approximate so even if we use m is equal to m not by 1 minus v by c square say it again 
So even if we use m is equal to m naught by root one minus v by c square, mm -hmm. then also we can't substitute there. No, you can't substitute there. It is an approximation. You know what happens? Uh, you know, since you're talking about it, it will become m naught one minus v by c whole square to the power minus half. Then if v is very less than c, minus half will come inside. So there comes the half factor. Okay. So this formula okay. comes from the approximation of this. Okay. But do, do not try to mix these two things. Otherwise, you will end up confusing yourself only. Okay. Yes. Make sure that uh, you assume that this is the kinetic energy formula, this one. Okay, but sometimes it is written uh, like, for example, it, they will tell you rest mass is this much. Okay, and they will say that uh, electron is moving with uh, 0.5 times speed of light, then what is its kinetic energy? So that type of question you need to identify and then use this concept. Don't try to mix up. Otherwise, it will be a confusing thing to you right now. Yes, I understand. Okay, so let us continue. What happened, guys? Where are others? Do you have some UTs coming up? Day after tomorrow, sir. Yes, sir, Saturday. Yes, sir. Saturday. So <laughs> today is Thursday. Which UT? Chemistry. Chemistry. Chemistry, sir. Is it scary, chemistry UT? Yes, sir. <laughs> so I, I hope you're not thinking about chemistry while sitting here. So chemistry is in by the teacher, guys. What? So like the connection is very strict, so like you have to study like very properly. That's good. Chemistry actually, uh, the good thing about chemistry is that whatever you do in school, everything will get translated to whatever is useful in uh, J or NEET, whichever exam you're writing, because the school level and J level they are not very far apart, mains level at least. So studying for school will help definitely, but then not uh, bunking physics classes and then studying chemistry. Okay, so I can't stress more about the fact that how important these classes are, at least the modern physics, which is giving you very, very easy marks. Anyway, so I can't uh, pull everyone by hand, right? I can just say. So last session we have, uh, done a introduction of the uh, nucleus, its mass, uh, its uh, size, then uh, we discuss about existence of neutrons, then we discuss about the stability of the nucleus, how stable particular nucleus is. Stability of a nucleus is caused by a mysterious strong force called nuclear force, which is attractive because of which only two protons are so close to each other, still it is stable. So because of the nuclear force, which is a strong force, nucleus is stable. But it is seen that uh, the nuclear force, which is very, very strong, it exists for a very small distance also. Okay, For example, 10 to the power minus 15, if your distance is slightly more than 10 to the power minus 15 uh, meters, which is the size of nucleus, nuclear force becomes zero immediately. And hence, stability is limited up to the size of the nucleus, which is very, very small. And the one reason why nucleus is small is because of the nature of nuclear force itself, which is applied to a very, very small distance. And because of which only, when nucleus becomes bigger, the size when it becomes bigger, uh, it tends to uh, gain instability also because nuclear force won't be able to hold each and every nucleon inside the nucleus. Nucleon is by the way proton and neutron both of them are called nucleon. Okay so once we determine that nucleus bigger nucleus can be unstable we learn that these bigger nucleus can spontaneously uh, go towards the stability. The most stable uh, nucleus we identified was iron. So these uh, heavy nucleus, they tend to go spontaneous disintegration and daughter nuclei are formed. You can say product and reactant also. So uh, the, because of this spontaneous reactions, there might be some radiations coming out. And it is seen that typically three different kinds of radiation that come out, alpha, beta and gamma. 
and depending on these three radiation we have named alpha decay gamma decay and uh, beta decay like that okay so then we have also discussed something mathematical about uh, all of this we determine the uh, rate of decay which is rate at which the number of nucleus are decreasing is proportional to the number of nuclei at that moment itself so we got a differential equation which says that dn by dt is equal to minus of lambda times n okay after this we have solved this differential equation and we determine that ln l by n not is equal to minus of lambda into t so from here we got n is equal to n not e to the power minus lambda into t okay we also derived that half life of the nucleus what is a half life amount of time taken by the number of nucleus to become half is this much okay which is ln 2 by lambda only put n equal to n not by 2 you will get this and we have found out that the average life is 1 by lambda okay all of this uh, we have done and uh, before this the i'm just listing down all the uh, mathematical uh, things we have before this we found out that the radius of nuclei is r equal to r not a to the power 1 by 3 what is the value of r not anybody knows this what it is you might have written right how much it is jaldi bolo 1.2 into 10 into 15 1.2 into 10 is for minus 15 meters this is the radius of the nuclei okay so and from einstein uh, relativity equation we got mass energy equivalence this this also implies mass is equal to whatever energy an object has divided by c square so some energy can get transmitted as mass using this equivalence reaction equivalence works both ways energy can be converted into mass mass can be converted into energy we have learned that if one unit of mass converts into energy how much energy it will liberate how much it was 931.5 mega electron volt okay all of these things should be on your fingertips okay you can also say 931 also just 931 is also enough okay we also learn about the binding energy of a nucleus is equal to the uh, mass defect it has which is the uh, atomic number into mass of proton plus a minus z which is mass number minus atomic number that will give you neutron so mass of neutron okay minus mass of the nucleus this is the mass defect and delta m into c square is your binding energy okay binding energy per nucleon is what this divided by the mass number which is number of protons plus neutrons so this is the mathematical part of it which we have learned why i have summarized this because let us take some numericals then we will discuss whatever is the pending portion of the chapter so very little is left so let us first do some questions on these anyone has any doubt quickly ask no one has any doubt aise kaise your uts are starting from saturday or you are in middle of a ut starting from saturday sir starting starting on saturday do this nafels students are there nafels yes sir shankin is there shankin kahan hai shankin bhai ha ye raha shankin shankin skanda और कौन है नेफल से वेल्स अच्छा सो अनुराग वेयर इज अनुराग सो ही वाज सो अनुराग इज देयर ओके यस सो डू दिस
how to go about this this is equivalent to potential energy between no one knows no one tripan do you know how to solve this uh, you have to consider them as point charges situated at their centers Ah. Then we can find the distance between them. Ah. R equal to R not A per one by six. Karo. See, uh, you have to find potential energy between six protons and six protons, and the distance between them is center to center distance between two nucleus, which is two times the radius of the carbon nucleus, and the radius of carbon nucleus is. R equal to R not a to the power one by three. Now do it. One point two into twelve to the power one by three. Femtometer, how much it is? This is two point seven four femtometers. Now do it. You have to answer in electron volts, okay? Electron volts. You are dealing with just two atoms. This is the distance between six six protons. They are touching each other. There are six protons. Neutrons I am ignoring because neutral particles won't have poten electric potential energy. They may have nuclear energy, but not the electric potential energy. What is the formula for potential energy that you can use? K times Q one Q two by what 2r k is 9 into 10 to the power 9 q1 and q2 both are six times charge of a proton which is 1.6 10 to the power minus 19 whole square actually that divided by Two into two point seven four into ten to the power minus fifteen. That divide by if you divide this by charge of one electron, you'll get it in electron volts. Okay, so this and that will be gone. How much it is roughly in electron volts? Anybody got it? One minute. All right. This chapter is all about calculation. Calculation is male part. Tell me what it is. If anyone has any doubt, please type that out also. If you have doubt, don't hold your doubts to yourself. Today, most of the time we are doing problem practice only. 
at the start itself don't start holding your doubts back This is around roughly 9.6 mega electron volt. Okay, don't write the M should not be a small M. Okay, Tripan. Sir, milli only, sir. No, 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 no. Sir, oh. Mega. See, this is nine. This is 19. So become minus 10. Then 10 to minus 15 goes up. It will become 10 is for five. Okay. Yes. Okay, everyone understood? Anyone has any doubt? Quickly type in. Okay. Now, just, just a small thought here. Suppose these two nucleus have to fuse into each other. Suppose uh, fusion reaction should happen between these two nucleus. You can say this is like your activation energy. You know what is activation energy? This is like a potential barrier. Okay. It is like this. So this much barrier, this much potential energy one has to supply for them to reach here so that nuclear forces become stronger and then reaction between these two nucleus will happen everyone understood this point also this is that is the reason why you don't see fusion reaction happening at a very less temperature the stars is having fusion reaction hydrogen and hydrogen atom they fuse and create helium okay so fusion reaction two hydrogen atoms should come very close to each other and before nuclear force starts applying, they will have a lot of repulsion because of the like charges between the two nucleus. So one has to overcome that. And how we overcome that? By creating a lot of kinetic energy in the nucleus. Kinetic energy of an atom means its temperature only. Okay. So we'll talk about this thing again when we talk about the fusion reaction. Right now, let's move ahead. Something very familiar. We have done something similar already. You can first write down the reaction. Twenty six proton, thirty neutron creates the iron nucleus. Binding energy is nothing but energy released in this reaction. much
did you find the mass defect how much it is first tell me mass defect what's the mass defect Anybody else got it? Dhyan got something. Others, mass defect is what? Twenty six into one point zero zero seven eight three plus thirty into one point zero zero eight six seven minus fifty five point nine three four nine. How much it is? Point ten point five. No. Okay. See, mass effect. You guys are getting different different answers. I can see that. Everyone is getting different answer for mass effect. do it yourself do not refer to any book or anything else you are not doing anything useful mass effect is 0.52878 okay see the problem you can see many of you have gone wrong many all right you have not gone wrong in concept you have gone wrong in the calculation part of it so you need to be very very careful with this otherwise no point knowing the concept you are as good as somebody who doesn't know anything understood okay so what is the answer in mega electron volt what should i do what should i do once i get the mass effect which is this then what what is the binding energy mass defect into c ha huh, c square is fine but if you want to multiply by c square you need to convert this into kg right now it is in units into 931.5 into 931.5 if you do you'll get it in mega electron volt tell me what it is do do this calculation okay do not feel uh, uh, you know frustrated by the kind of calculation you are having this will benefit you in many ways quickly find out what it is let's see whether all of you are getting the same thing do it it is useful to you tripan are you doing anything just sitting there is doing sir so why not answering vibha srishti what is the answer Okay, she she got something. Tripan got something. Done. Okay. All of you should answer.
I'll tell you the exact thing what it is. 492.54. Okay. This much MeV. How much binding energy per nucleon? How to find out per nucleon? Anyone? This is the by binding energy. That divided by 56, which is equal to what? You guys know it already. Binding energy per nucleon for iron is 8.5. 75 MeV. Okay, this is like the most stable nucleus binding energy per nucleon. Okay, so you can check whether it is this one or not later on. So this divided by 56 is binding energy per nucleon. This too we will do later on. Um, this is also later on. This one. Decay constant, you can, uh, what is the unit of decay constant, by the way? Lambda unit says? Anyone? Per second. Per, per unit time. That could be per day, per year, whatever. I mean, you can answer lambda in terms of per day also, just fine. You don't need to convert every time into seconds. Also, it also depends on, you know, the kind of options in front of you. If options are in days, you write it in per day. Hertz, don't, don't write lambda in hertz, okay? Although the hertz and lambda, both units are per second, but hertz means something is oscillating. <laughs> don't use that. Okay, Anjali, what is the answer? Lambda. What have you done? Point six nine three divided by what? Divided by half life. Half life is point six nine three by lambda. So lambda is point six nine three by half life, isn't it? That divided by two point seven. This is this you can find out in per day. How much it comes out? That's about uh, 0 0.26. Per day. Ah, this is A. B, average life. Four days, okay, four days. Average life formula is what? T average, one by lambda, right? One by lambda, so it is definitely less than four, less than four it is. One divided by 0.25 is four. 
This is one divided by point two five six. But yeah, close to four only. So this will be around three point nine days. Ravi Kiran, don't use uh, calculator. C. Do the C. Activity you have to find in Becquerel. BQ. What is the formula for activity, everyone? Activity is what? What? N lambda. N lambda. Activity is nothing but rate of decay, right? D N by D T, which is lambda times N. Mod of D N by D T is lambda times N. So do it. What is n? How do you get n? One milligram of that. That is ten to the power minus three gram. That divided by one ninety eight into six point zero two three. So ten to the power twenty three. All of you understand that this is n. That into lambda. Lambda is point two five six. This per day, per second, you have to do. That is twenty four hours, sixty minutes, sixty seconds. This. See how nice it looks. Calculation. Tripan, what is the answer for this? One ninety-eight. Roughly, you can tell denominator. You can take close to two hundred. When you increase the denominator slightly, you can increase the numerator also. Tell me, what is the answer? So, like calculated in terms of days, sorry. Ah, so usko convert karo per second. Yes, multiply one. that with this. Twenty-four into sixteen into sixty. Damn, getting it. So on, almost. Damn, la ke karo sawal. Okay, Tarpan got something, and that is not correct. Nine 
no everyone is getting different different answer no wait yeah that's correct tripan got it correct actually it is roughly 6.6 6.73 into 10 to the power 13 becquerel this calculation but in the book it is written something else probably in the book the answer is not correct okay so this is the answer i hope things are clear just it is about the calculation okay let's take see i don't have many questions okay you uh, you have to practice them if you uh, practice them right now you will have to practice lot lesser number of numericals when exam comes but if you don't do it right now you may have to work three times more later on so why you're doing to yourself focus here practice each and every question you have here arpita will tell the answer for this others also keep doing it you can message arpita what is the answer Arpita is there or not? Sir, I'm there. I'm doing sir once again. Name is there. Arpita is reading chemistry while being in the class. Sir, no sir. All right. So, okay, good. I can see many of you got it correct. So some of you. are making silly errors also all right so radioactive sample has this much nuclei at certain stand how many nuclei will still be at the same active state active state means what active state means remaining ones okay the remaining ones the remaining one after one half life is and not by two after two half life is whatever remains divided by two so after two half life and not by two square will remain so how much will remain six divided by four into 10 to the power 18 which is 1.5 into 10 to the power 18 active nuclei will remain so that is the answer okay Okay, I can see almost everyone got it. Okay, now I have big looking questions only. But anyways, let's do this.
counts means disintegrations per counts mean disintegration all right so disintegration per week is given when when you burn the charcoal does anything happen to the nucleus everyone when you burn it co2 is released does anything will happen to the nucleus of carbon no sir no sir everyone nothing will happen to the nucleus burning is a chemical reaction carbon carbons uh, electrons will take part in the reaction it will react with oxygen okay nucleus will remain that only so what is counts let me know if you are stuck counts is disintegration disintegration per week is given okay these things are given like this should i do it now log of 1.5 yeah that's fine you you tell the answer in terms of log that is fine no problem so we can assume n not is the same for both Tarpan, what is your answer? Not getting it. Number of initial nuclei will be same or not for both of them? When they started disintegrating, can I say that number of nuclei are same for both? Yes, sir. Equal masses, right? So equal number of nuclei is when they started. Okay, should I solve it now or should I wait? None of you got it correct till now. Tripan thinks my speaker is on mute. Can you speak, Tripan? Then I'll check. Yes, sir. I can hear. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, I'll solve it now. There you go. Number of A will be equal to whatever was the initial number 
e to the power minus lambda into t1 after t1 times its activity is becoming this let's say that is t1 after t2 times same number of nuclei is uh, n not will become nb which will be equal to n not e to the power minus lambda into t2 okay i don't know what is n not but i know that is equal so n not n not will be same so i can just divide it okay when i divide it i will get na by nb is equal to e to the power uh, lambda times t2 minus t1 this i get now na by nb is what na by nb i can multiply okay. lambda both sides lambda na by lambda nb this is equal to this and that only okay so lambda na by lambda nb is equal to rate of disintegration 2100 divided by 1400 this is equal to e to the power lambda times t2 minus t1 okay and you can see that there is a division happening here it is dimensionless so i don't need to convert week into seconds when i divide the multiplication factor will become same all right now 7 twos are 7 threes are 3 by 2 is this getting it so 1.5 is equal to e to the power lambda t2 minus t1 take natural log both sides ln of 1.5 is equal to lambda times delta t when say t2 minus t1 so delta t is ln of 1.5 divided by lambda now lambda is what lambda is uh is 0.693 into t half half life is 5 7 Three zero years. So this is how carbon dating is done. This is the difference in the life of their samples. A anybody got this one? This thing? No one? Yes. Sir. Okay. Have you understood this? Dhyan got it. Good. All right. We'll proceed next. this we are done this is interesting capacitor circuit is different okay so there are two different things happening here Did you guys get date for your pre boards in school? No sir, in second year pre board. Second no sir, year to start sir. Usually it happens in the month of first week of November. It used to happen.
So you're planning to bunk centum classes for when the pre board starts? No, sir. Yes. So we are going to have crash course during that time. <laughs> so difficult to manage, but that's how. Anybody close to the answer? You can give answer in terms of log, in terms of e to the power, whatever it is there, okay? But at least little bit of simplification you can do. Don't give answer in terms of uh, three, div three divided by 5.6 like that. Whatever you can do by hand calculation, do it. And then whatever remains, you can answer in terms of that. Yeah, you can assume initial number to be n naught. That is constant anyways. Trippan got Trippan LN2 is 0.693. Nobody else? Okay, listen here. Sir, one second, sir. One second. These formulas you know or not? E to the power minus T by RC. Charge is decreasing with time. Ratio should be constant. N by Q should be independent of T. What is a condition so that they are independent of T? What should be the condition? What do you think? Coefficient of T must be zero. Coefficient of time should be zero, right? Then only it will be independent of T. So one by RC minus lambda should be equal to zero. Everyone understand this, how this comes? If it has to be independent of T, type in quickly. Have you understood this? Okay. So R is equal to <clears throat> C lambda. Lambda is ln2 by T half. T half is given, right? Half life is given? Huh. No, average life is given. So lambda is one by average life. So this divided by 20 milliseconds. It's equal to one by, C. one by C lambda. Yeah. One by C lambda. Uh, I was just checking whether you guys are awake. One by C lambda. So one divided by C is 10 raised to the power minus 4 into lambda is 1 by uh, uh, 
20 milliseconds so 20 into 10 is of minus 3 so that is 200 ohms okay so this is uh, the mistake sometimes you do you you are used to seeing the half life given suddenly instead of half life average life is given and in the options guess what there will be an option in which this same thing will be treated as half life so you will make error there okay like what tripan did right tripan yes so i think you can see that uh, even though problem looks huge but then they are very simple questions they are not difficult when you look at the solution okay this will do later on this is radioactivity 80 percent of chance is if there is a question from this chapter it will be from radioactivity it's like young's double seed experiment how important that was in wave optics similarly uh, how radioactivity is important in this chapter have we done this uh, okay you know how to solve it get the correct answer i'm just checking whether you can calculate accurately Okay, I want average life in terms of years. Tell me in years, what is the average life? That will make more sense. How you convert this into years? That divided by pi. Pi into 10 power 7. Hmm. How much it is? How many years? Six point four nine into ten is power nine years. Okay, so six billion years is the half life. Okay, now B part. What is the half life? How do you calculate half life from the average life? T half is how much times average life? 0 0.693. 0 0.693 half. Sorry, average is T half. How much it is? This into 0 0.693 is how much? Quick, very quick. Tell me.
फोर पॉइंट फाइव इंटू टेन एस पर नाइन इयर्स रफली डू इट योर सेल्फ सी पार्ट वट इज दंसर How many half lives? Is nine into ten to the power nine? How many half lives? Two half. Two half. In one half life, it becomes half. In two half life, it will be one by one four. By number is one by four. Activity will also be one by four. Activity is proportional to number. Activity is lambda times n. Do this. Radium chloride is the compound which Madame Curie has extracted from a rock or something. is chlorine radioactive here or only radium is radioactive sir only radium only radium okay usually radioactive elements are very heavy they go spontaneous disintegration chlorine is very light Done. Again, the the formula is straightforward. You need to find d n by d t, right? This is the activity, which is equal to lambda times n. Okay, lambda is point. Six nine three divided by t half that into n. Okay, show me got something. Others.
how to get number of radium nucleus n is what you have 0.1 gram of radium chloride so 0.1 divided by molecular mass of radium chloride not the atomic mass of radium okay so that is uh, 226 plus 2 times 35.5 this into avogadro number everybody understood this yes and half life you have to write in terms of uh, the seconds that is 1602 into pi into 10 to the power 7 okay so get the answer now substitute it here there multiply that with 0.693 and tell me what is the answer such a nice calculation Trippan got something. Thus, no Trippan. That's not correct. That's very very less Trippan actually. Yes. No way, bro. check what mistakes you have done only calculation mistakes you can do now show me got something no that's not correct trippan got something again yes that is close to the correct one okay good at least you guys are trying that's good the answer is 2.8 into 10 to the power 9 becquerel every second these many nucleus are disintegrating or decaying radium okay i'll move forward only one or two questions are remaining on radioactivity all right those who haven't tried do this So what's the previous answer? Two point eight uh, into ten to the power nine becquerel. Thank you, sir. You can answer in terms of log also. Uh, sir hmm a uh, sir in such kind of questions should we take one month as 30 days or 31 days 30 take it as 30 you like your calculations then
No one? Sir, I think they want us to take a month as 28.6 days. <laughs> okay. Okay. But then only we can get answers. Otherwise, some log and all will come complicated. Okay. So, but then that should be written. You can take your half life to be 15 days. Now do it. Two hundred rupees, Tripan will buy for two hundred rupees. Sankin also spent two hundred rupees. Don't keep radioactive element nearby. Very, very harmful. Um, the answer is one eighty seven rupees in the book. So yeah, but then we have modified it, so that's fine. I don't need to solve this, right? So in two in two half lives, you'll have uh, n not becoming n not by four. So even activity will be one by fourth. That is two hundred rupees. Okay. Is done. How many radioactive we have? One and two. Just two more. Even tritium is radioactive, though it is a light. Atom. For part A, what is the answer? Ajay Sabrish, what is the answer? Two inch per one second. Kya bol raha hai? Type it out. Could not understand.
ओके प्रथम रवि किरण शॉमिक यस दैट्स करेक्ट विभव चेक योर आंसर यू नो डायरेक्टली नंबर इज गिवन टू यू हाफ लाइफ इज गिवन सो यू शुड नॉट मेक एरर हियर एटलीस्ट इट इज यू नो इट इज नॉट गुड इफ यू मेक मिस्टेक इन सिंपली दिस काइंड ऑफ थिंग This is roughly seven point one, seven point one into ten is power fourteen becquerel. Okay, it will be sad if you get this wrong. Okay, then nobody else is responsible for it. Simple multiplication, B part. Number of uh, nuclei that decayed in next ten hours. How do you do this? okay you don't need to completely solve it you have to do it like this n equal to n not e to the power minus lambda t okay yeah the put the value of t over here lambda is given lambda you can find out and n not is given to you you find n which is the uh, n is number of nuclei that are remaining n not minus n is the answer n is not the answer n is remaining nuclei Got it. Similarly, you can do the C part also. All right. C part, so you can C part you can answer actually. It's some. It is some multiple of two. Try right? so getting the answer for the C part. You don't need to do any complex thing there. Don't be in a hurry. immediately you get it wrong otherwise yes chomik that's not correct no so that that's not correct number of dkes in next 6.15 years it is not half life if i ask you number of dkes in next 12.3 years then 2 into 10 is power 23 is correct it's not in half life
okay so let's see how to solve this ln n by n naught is equal to minus lambda into t now i can write this as ln n by n naught to be equal to minus of ln 2 by uh, half life so it is minus of ln 2 t is half of the half life so ln 2 by 2 will come right so ln of n by n naught is equal to minus of ln square root 2 fine so n naught by n is equal to root 2 so n is equal to n naught by root 2 so this is the number of nuclei that are remaining number of decays will be n naught by root n naught minus n naught by root 2 everybody understand this how it comes type it quickly then we'll move ahead okay last question on radioactivity last one after this we are not going to do any question till you write your j mains remember that i mean we as in i will not <laughs> you have to practice anyways question on carbon dating I think it is simple. Okay, so I think here you have to take log and all. Dn by dt is lambda times n naught. N naught is the uh, number of nucleus in one gram. All right, this is given as fifteen point three. Okay, and it is per minute. That's fine. 
we are going to anyway take the ratio of it. dn by dt is lambda into n, which is 12.3 per gram per minute. So we have taken for one gram what it is. So when you take the ratio, we will get n naught by n is equal to 15 by 3 divided by 12 by 3. So ln of n by n naught is actually ln of 12.3 divided by 15.3. This is equal to minus lambda times t. And I can modify it and write it like this ln 12.3 divided by 15.3. This is equal to minus of 0.693 divided by 5. Do I need to convert the time into seconds, everyone? Can I write like this? Will I get t in years? What do you think? Yes, sir. Okay. If I write like this, I'll get t in years. This right hand side is dimensionless, anyways. So you can have any dimension, or you can have any unit for lambda and t. When they multiply, anyway, it becomes dimensionless. This into 0.693 ln of 15.3 divided by 12.3. This is the answer. Okay. All right, so this is what the uh, radioactivity is all about up till here. We can now continue with the chapter. What is the time right now? It is, yeah, we have 20 minutes before the break. Let's continue with the chapter and then we will see what other kind of numericals that are there in this particular chapter. Okay. I hope no one has any doubt here. If there is, quickly type in. Hmm. Fine. So talking about the radioactivity, we now know that there are three kinds of radioactivity that exist and the name is uh, with respect to what particles they emit. So let's quickly talk about them one by one. The first one is alpha decay wherein alpha particle is emitted. Alpha decay. So one uh, popular example of alpha decay is 238 uranium, its uh, atomic number is 92, converts to thorium plus alpha particle. Alpha particle is helium nucleus, which has two protons and four nucleons. So what will be the atomic number of thorium? What it is? 234 and 90. This is 90 and this is 234. Okay. In fact, you can see here for two protons are gone with the helium. So remaining protons are 90. So every time alpha decay happens, every time it happens, the atomic number will go down by two and the mass number goes down by four. Okay, there are numericals on this as well. Uh, of course, it will not be as straightforward as this looks. They may mix uh, the beta decay also along with it. But this is the starting point. How much heat will be emitted in this reaction? Any guesses? Suppose mass masses are given to you. Mass of helium, y and x, they are given to you. Then? How much heat will be emitted? Mx minus My minus mass of helium into C square. Understood? No. What is the doubt? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so let's take a numerical then. 
things, right? We have, I think, a numerical from your textbook only. This is part two, right? You can see our first focus is your school and then we go up to higher order questions directly from your school book. Do it. Siddharth got for the first one and that is not correct. The reaction is the same reaction which we have just written. Uranium 92 to 38 it emits an alpha particle thorium gets created yes ravi kiran fine skanda what is that electron volt ayush is that electron volt how come Ayush and Skanda are getting exactly same answer? Are you guys talking to each other? <laughs> no, no, it, it can't be this much energy, Skanda. One, one reaction, you're talking about one reaction, one atom creates 10 is power 14 joules. Imagine one mole of atom, how many joules it will create. Entire earth could uh, be utilizing that power for generations to come. How to solve this question? First, you need to find the mass defect as always. Okay, mass defect is helium, ma uh, not the helium one, sorry. Mass defect is by 238. First, tell me the mass defect. How much you're getting mass defect, everyone? This minus 234.04363 minus 4.00. 260. What is the mass defect? Point zero zero four five six. 
पॉइंट जीरो जीरो फोर फाइव सिक्स यूनिट्स इज द मास इफेक्ट सो एनर्जी रिलीज विल बी हाउ मच दिस इन टू नाइन थर्टी वन पॉइंट फाइव मेगा इलेक्ट्रॉन वोल्ट हाउ मच इट इज टेल मी इट्स फोर पॉइंट टू फाइव एम ई वी दिस इज द एनर्जी रिलीज इन वन रिएक्शन देर कैन बी मेनी रिएक्शन हैपनिंग मेनी एज इन टेन एस फॉर ट्वेंटी थ्री रिएक्शन माइट बी हैपनिंग फॉर वन मोल ओके सो डोंट अंडर एस्टिमेट द अमाउंट ऑफ एनर्जी रिलीज दिस ओनली फॉर वन रिएक्शन ओके दिस इज ए पार्ट बी पार्ट वट इज द आंसर what is the mass defect in the b part if uranium 238 emits a proton what will happen it will become 237 and 91 it will become palladium plus proton mass defect is how much over here mass of uranium minus mass of pa plus h how much it is calculate how much it is mass effect Negative, right? Minus of point zero zero eight. So, what does it mean? It means that it has to. You need to supply energy so that energy can be converted into mass. Can it happen spontaneously? Any endothermic reaction can happen spontaneously. It cannot happen. Okay. everyone understand hello yes sir okay hello like the sad kyun hmm? remember how much noise you guys to used to make in class 11th i had a hard time keeping you quiet now everyone is so quiet i want you to talk write down beta dk okay beta dk can be of two types beta minus beta minus dk wherein electron is emitted beta plus dk wherein a positron is emitted okay so how electron gets emitted we are talking about nucleus here nucleus emits the electron what happens is in beta minus dk a neutron converts to proton and because of charge conservation one electron has to get emitted inside the nucleus neutron converts to proton and one electron is emitted and there is one mysterious particle also that get emitted which is anti neutrino okay so this is beta minus 
and beta plus decay. Any cases what will happen in beta plus? E plus should be emitted. No one. Proton converts to neutron. Proton converts to neutron. Charge conservation will happen. One particle which has same mass as that of electron, but a positive charge will be emitted. So you can't call it proton plus neutrino. Okay, neutrino and anti-neutrino are mysterious particles. They are mystery to everyone now also. They are so mysterious that they, I mean, they will not found initially. They were like, they, when they emit, they can cross the entire earth from one point to the other point, just like that and doesn't interact with anything, okay? So later on only by some process, which I'm not aware of, they found to know, they got to know that there is an, a neutrino and anti-neutrino particle that also come out, okay? So this is the reaction that happens. Now, if this is a reaction, suppose I talk about the beta minus emission of the phosphorus, what will happen, everyone? Write the reaction for beta minus decay. Beta minus decay of phosphorus. What will happen? Everyone, write down. Phosphorus will become what? Proton is increased, so it will become sulfur. Mass number will be 32 only. Neutron converts to proton, so number of neutron plus proton remains same. So this plus electron plus one anti-neutron. This is the reaction, beta minus decay. Okay, now can you write down the beta plus decay of sodium? Let's say 1122. What will happen? Everyone write it down. Quick, all of you, tell me what will happen. What will happen to the atomic number? How much it will become? In beta plus, one proton converts to neutron. So atomic number will be? 23. Atomic number 23. 10, sir. 10, number of proton is 11. One proton got converted into neutron, so protons have decreased. But number of protons plus neutron they are unchanged so this will become neon 10 and 22 so you can see that chemical reaction only changes the electronic configuration here it changes the entire existence of it there's a beta plus okay okay so this is these are the two examples one is beta minus other is beta plus and one very important thing point to note here is that that mass number is unchanged in beta emission whether it is beta plus or beta minus mass number remain unchanged in beta emission in beta does element always change oh, the you can see in beta minus atomic number has increased by one beta plus 
atomic number has decreased by one so the element changes okay so like this if you can can convert mercury into gold also if mercury uh, mercury's atomic number is 80 so if it loses one proton or if it undergoes beta plus emission mercury can become gold but that doesn't happen Okay, so next is the third type of radioactivity, gamma, gamma decay, gamma decay. So like I said, gamma is, a, is an EM wave. So there is no change in atomic number or mass number because of this, no change in atomic sorry mass number and atomic number okay usually usually followed by alpha decay and beta decay so after alpha and beta, de beta decay then gamma decay happens okay now can you tell me gamma decay once it happens will the mass of the nucleus remain same decreases or increases after gamma decay. say it again decreases 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 why because em wave is it has an energy so correct so some mass has to get converted into the gamma radiation all right this is what at the core level things are Good. So you should now start thinking in that way. In fact, uh, in this chapter, this is what they want you to think like. They don't want you to talk about bonds. They don't want you to talk about potential energy and all those things. It is entirely mass energy equivalence, entire chapter. Okay. So one example is this. Suppose there is a cobalt here. Okay, I'm taking example from your textbook only. There's a cobalt. This cobalt, I'll first plot these levels. Huh. So what happens is cobalt undergoes beta minus decay. What will happen to the atomic number? Increases or decreases by one? Increases. Increases. Increases, right? Beta my although it is minus, but it increases. Electron is emitted. That's why beta minus. So what it will become? Twenty-eight. Nickel. Nickel. Nickel it will become. Twenty-eight nickel sixty. This is in excited state. Then this is nucleus of the nickel. It is here. All right, what will happen is that it can go to this energy level. It can then transition to that energy level also. All right, the lowest level is a ground state. So this one is the second excited state. Put one star here and this is the ground state of the nickel nucleus. So something like what electron undergoes. Okay, electron also has similar transition that happens from quantum number 2 to 1, 3 to 2 like that. Okay, so this energy difference in terms of electron level, we are just couple of electron volt. But here the nucleus energy level when transition happens is of the order of mega electron volt. So the difference in energy level for the nucleus transition is very, very high. Okay, now tell me up. All of all, all these three nickels, whose mass will be highest? Double star, single star, or no star? Double star. Double. This one mass is highest. In fact, this mass minus that mass, whatever is the mass difference, will be released as this energy. 
okay so you can see when we talked about electron we were talking about okay whatever is the sum of kinetic energy plus potential energy at n equal to 2 minus sum of kinetic energy plus potential energy at n equal to 1 will be the energy of the photon that is how we used to talk okay but here we are talking in terms of mass so excited state mass is slightly higher when it transitions to lower state some mass gets converted into energy we don't talk about potential energy and kinetic energy even though potential energy kinetic energy is there that is represented in form of in the form of mass itself okay so these are the three decays that are there okay alpha beta and gamma decay uh, we need to discuss about fission and fusion reaction also so we can take a small break come back discuss about the fission and fusion and then we can take up next type of questions from this chapter okay so let's take a small break right now it is 606 meet after 15 minutes 621 come back in time okay
All right, uh, you can hear me, everyone? Am I audible? Yes. Okay. Aja, uh, one thing is that these energy levels are so big that the frequency corresponding to it is larger than that of X-rays. Okay, they are very, very uh, strong uh, EM wave, you can say. Fine. 